Hello and welcome to the fall edition of PVTV News. I'm Cameron Cullen. And I'm Megan Coughlin. At the beginning of every school year, the student body and faculty review all rules and regulations set forth by the Administration and Board of Education. Psaic Valley's policy regarding cell phone use in schools is one which many question. Lily DiMattia investigates the need for strict enforcement. Hi, I'm Lily DiMattia from PVTV News. At the beginning of each school year, the Passaic Valley High School Administration sets policies regarding the safety of the students. They range from appropriate clothing to bullying and harassment. One of the policies that is strictly enforced regards the usage of cell phones. Well, technology is a two-way street. There are tremendous advantages with technology, and as I've indicated in class meetings many times, social network has a, a tremendous place. But the reality is the negative side of our technology is the immediate reaction uh, that it can cause and some of the problems it can cause. We've seen it happen on street corners. We've seen it happen in athletic arenas. And it can happen in schools where people take advantage and create a problem by using that technology. Uh, it's strictly enforced for a couple of reasons. Cell phones uh, present several problems to us. One is that they most cell phones now have cameras. Uh, that presents a privacy issue. Um, it could cause, it, it causes a lot of problems, especially because those pictures could be sent any place. That's the one issue. The second issue, of course, it's a disruption of class. Cell phones go off. Kids are texting during that. Uh, it also becomes a, a safety issue when the use of cell phones, if something were to happen in the school, and people are texting there. First of all, it uses communication lines. And second of all, you don't want to cause more of a melee than you have going already by them alarming people, having them come to the school. So those are some of the issues that, that cell phones raise in a school. In May 2012, a student tweeted in attempts to gather the entire student body in Center Hall with the intention of disrupting students' movement to their class. It's like any reaction to any fight and incident. We don't want our school to be disrupted in, in any way, whether it's caused by a Facebook account, whether it's caused by a Twitter posting or whatever it may be. So we become very upset. We want our school to be a safe environment. We think generally most students follow uh, the rules and the guidelines, but occasionally there are those who create a problem, and as a result we have to deal with them. The, the rule for using a cell phone is, uh, in, in the, the, the policy says when a, a staff member sees the cell phone, they're to confiscate it. Uh, they're to confiscate it and give it to the assistant principal. No, seriously, if any fight ever breaks out, you just, you just try to protect the, all the students, the students in the fight uh, and, and around the fight. So you want to, you want to, you're concerned about everybody's safety. So you just do your best to separate the parties. I actually don't think the administration overreacted because I think it was what they had to do because it was just getting out of hand and it was the only way they can control it. So. Well, how, how do they affect it? Well, they can disrupt it, of course. Uh, uh, you know, just the fact that it's a distraction. People are they're trying to text during the, the class. Uh, people are reading their text. They're, maybe they're even making arrangements to meet in the bathroom. Um, so those are, those are the type things, and, and of course, it's the, most of them are smartphones. Smartphones have access to the Internet. That's certainly an unfiltered Internet. We have no filters on cell phones, so we have no idea what the student is viewing or looking at at the time. As a result of multiple incidents, the administration enforced stricter policies at the beginning of the school year, including a no-tolerance policy for cell phones. Administration is now aware if students are on social networks. They are now punishing students and teachers if they are caught in class. I'm Lily DiMattia from PVTV News. Thank you, Lily. Please remember to keep all cell phones in a safe place where it will not interfere with classroom learning. The most important responsibility of PV's faculty is to ensure that all students are provided with the best education available. The Supervisor of Curriculum was created to help all teachers implement the new standards set forth by the New Jersey Department of Education. Marcel Lewis learned about Mr. O'Brien's new role. It's the supervisor of curriculum's job to ensure that the students of PV are provided with the best education. This position has been filled by former English teacher, Mr. Michael O'Brien. Students and faculty appreciate his hard work and dedication to the school. Supervisor of curriculum, my job, I have three main projects that I'm working on. Uh, one of which is to rewrite the school curriculum according to a educational philosophy called Understanding by Design, which is geared towards connecting the material that students learn to real world situations. 
the director of curriculum position is new, so uh, I think just giving us a basis, a foundation for what exactly the curriculum style we're using is, uh, because none of us have really been uh, instructed on it. So Mr. O'Brien's job is essentially to instruct us on the new curriculum format. Specifically, Mr. O'Brien is in charge of curriculum, all the curriculums, or everything that's taught here. He's working on the, um, the new core standards that have been adopted by the state to ensure that those standards are being met in the new curriculum. Mr. O'Brien has been working with the teachers to create an entirely new basis and format of teaching. I work with the teachers in creating these curriculums and then that and there will hopefully increase the or improve rather the experience of the student. So I think what it does best is it takes all of the teachers teaching the same subject and puts them on the same page. The superintendent, Dr. Gigano, is very appreciative of Mr. O'Brien's hard work and dedication. Well, I think you have to have a passion for curriculum. Not everyone enjoys getting involved uh, in the area of curriculum. And uh, just working with Mr. O'Brien over the last couple of years, watching him involved in his graduate program, uh, became clear to me that he had that kind of passion. So we were excited about the opportunity of having him become the supervisor. The new position of supervisor of curriculum has improved the teaching methods here at Pasake Valley. Teachers and students have benefited from the collaboration of ideas. From PVTV, I'm Marcel Lewis. Thanks, Marcel. Many changes have been made in the cafeteria to adhere to state mandates on nutrition. Lauren Lawson outlines the changes in offerings and students' responses. As the new school year begins, many changes have been made to Passaic Valley over the summer, including the new lunch program. Passaic Valley is taking small but prominent steps towards lowering the rate of obesity in teenagers. There was a letter that was sent home to the parents in the packet in August relative to the changes that have been made to the school lunch program. Uh, this document was authored by the Pomptonian Food Services, who is our third party vendor who takes care of the cafeteria. And it spelled out to the parents and the students uh, what is going to happen to the school lunch program this year as well as next year relative to both the price increase and the changes in the component of a lunch. I think the new lunch policy is hard on teenagers because they're getting smaller portions for more money, but I think in the end this is going to benefit the student body. Fruit and vegetable cups are now provided with every meal as a healthy alternative as to sugary snacks. There was something called the Healthy Hunger Free Kids Act that was signed into law by the president that had all of these requirements that the school lunch program now must abide to. I think this new lunch policy will benefit the student body because it's going to help us learn to eat right and overall help us become healthier. I like the new lunch policy because it's easier for everyone to get a healthy lunch instead of just buying fries and bagels all the time. The meal planning requirements are similar to what they were in that the cafeteria must still offer a five component meal each day containing protein, grains, fruit, vegetable, and milk. I believe that some students are worried that their favorite things from lunch are going to be taken away because of this new lunch policy or that they'll be more expensive than they were already before. I think that these lunches will make a positive effect on the student body, it's healthier, and it's going to help their health in the end. So when the students get used to the reduction in the meat component and less breading on the chicken nuggets and those kinds of things, I think in the end it, it, it should have a positive impact because we're serving more nutritional items to the students. As you can see, Passaic Valley is making positive contributions to living a healthier lifestyle. Hopefully the student body will continue to live this lifestyle outside of school. For PVTV, I'm Lauren Lawson. Thank you, Lauren. It may take time adjusting, but providing a more nutritious menu will certainly benefit all. Eating right will also help student athletes stay healthy and maximize their performance in the designated sport. There are some new faces among PV's coaching staff, including Mr. Goodman. He discussed the outlook of the cross-country season with PVTV's own Jesse Rivera. Cross-country has been a major sport at Passaic Valley for many years. The 2012 season is going to be a special one. Not only does the team have high expectations, but a new head coach. This year, the team is going to have a different look. Mr. Goodman, who has been teaching at PV for years, is now the head coach. Him along with Mr. Francisco, the assistant coach, are both dedicated to turning the team around and producing results. Uh, well, expectations first. I expect uh, you know, that, that the team will, uh, will, will work hard and will be motivated to improve. My goals are really that um, 
some of them have already been met. One goal was that we have a girls team that is complete and uh, you know scores in races, and we've already got that. Another goal is that the boys team continually improves. And in our first meet, as you know, we won a, we won a, a dual meet against West Milford. What I think really sets cross country apart from other sports is the fact that you have such a mental and, and obviously such a physical uh, composition to the sport. Um, it is a sport where, and I think I've said this in the past, uh, there's no fans. Rarely uh, on, on the 5K course are there people cheering you on. Usually you're out of sight. Uh, the only people that see you are your teammates and, and people from the opposing team. And um, you really don't get any of that external support, which I think a lot of athletes in a way rely on. You have to show your best when no one is looking. Um, and I think what that builds into is a, is a discipline for the individual to work hard. The team begins training in the summer. This helps the runners build a base so they can become stronger as the season progresses. During this time, the captains and veteran runners have more responsibilities. One of my main responsibilities is, is to warm up the team every single day. Hey, and to lead the stretches before and after the practices, make sure that everyone uh, does what they're supposed to do and not fool around. Uh, it's hard to pick f standouts necessarily, but I I'll just say a few things. Uh, let's start with the girls. Uh, Megan Rich um, joins us this year for the first time from uh, field hockey, and uh, she has a very good experience having run uh, distance indoors and outdoor track. Uh, and she's, you know, starting off already uh, leading the team. Uh, she looks like she'll be one of the top uh, runners in Passaic County, perhaps. And on the boys' side, we're kind of blessed with a lot of talent. We have, you know, probably ten guys, I would say, who are going to be competing for those top five or seven spots, which is really great. That's what you really want on a team. With the new head coach and runners, the Passaic Valley cross country team is looking forward to the 2012 season. The team hopes to build on past success and build a strong team for years to come. For PVTV News, I'm Jesse Rivera. Thanks, Jesse. Good luck to the cross country team. Coach Johnson has returned to the post of head football coach. Kate Cowart discovered what made him the best candidate for the job. The Stake Valley's football team is seeing a few staff changes this year. After serving three years as defensive coordinator, Mr. Johnson has been rehired as head coach, a post he held from 1999 to 2003. Mr. Johnson had a really good interview. Um, he presented his philosophy very well to the administration and the, the athletic committee during our interview. And we were looking somebody with for somebody with head coaching experience, um, first and foremost, because the Passaic Valley football program deserves somebody who's an experienced coach. Working with Mr. Johnson, he knows everything about the game. He knows where you should be at all times. If you just listen to him, we'll win every single game. The intensity really kicked up. I mean, we focus more on the little things, as all the coaches said, as far as conditioning, lifting, and they put, pushed us so far that when it comes to game time, we're not as tired. Being a player for Coach Johnson, I had a lot of respect for him. I knew he put a lot of time in and a lot of, a lot of effort for us kids. It was tremendous knowing that our head coach would be able to do stuff like that for us. Now being a, a coach for him, I see all the time and hard work he puts in. He puts a lot of time in the film room. He puts a lot of time outside of, of the football field. And it really is a special feeling knowing that he's here for the kids and he wants to bring back the winning tradition that Passaic Valley is looking for. In the end, who is a better candidate than somebody who's been here and works here, knows the student athletes, knows the tradition of Passaic Valley, and you know what we demand from our, our football program. He knew what it was all about, so we thought he would come in and hit the ground running, and he, he's done that, in my opinion. Everybody seems to be fired up for this season. Mr. Johnson's a great coach. He knows what he's doing. And if we just put in our time like he puts in his, we'll have a good season. A lot has changed since I've first played under Coach Johnson. Now that I get to coach alongside of him, I see that he asks a lot out of his players. He wants, every, he wants everything done from in season to out of season. He wants to make you a better person on the field and off the field. We feel like we can make a pretty big playoff run with Mr. Johnson as head coach. He's been there before and he knows what he's doing. This season, the Passaic Valley Hornets have seen many staff changes. However, the coaches and players still have very high expectations. As the season progresses, players will continue to test their ability on the field. From PVTV, I'm Kate Callett. Thanks, Kate. The team can always count on support from fans. 
One challenge for the football team this season is adjusting to the new football training laws rolled out by the state of New Jersey. Brianna Canataro found out how Coach Johnson modified workouts to adhere to the regulations and how players are responding. This summer, the state of New Jersey rolled out new football training laws. For some players, the change was for the better, but for others, not so much. One thing is for sure, everyone involved in the football program was greatly affected by these transformations. Well, the state has previously recommended that you use certain amount of hours, number of practices, a day, days off, and now the state has mandated that you do it. Um, for instance, you're only allowed to have one practice with pads on for the first three days, and then when you do come back out, you have to come back with just a helmet on. So it's changed a little bit, and it's, it's different than what we're used to doing. The first time around, it was double sessions every day, right up until school started, and now it's a double, single, double, single type situation. So yeah, it's very different. The changes in place creates a whole new practice situation compared to last year's, which each player takes differently. My position was affected because I didn't start off playing this position. I started off playing a different position. So with the change in training, I didn't get enough time to practice and get enough experience on position to start the year. We work harder every practice and we do things right and more than everything's more intense. Well, this one's been shortened, and last year we were allowed to practice for as long as we could, so hours would be longer, but now with the two hours and 30 more minutes, um, they really pack everything in and we get out real fast. With the shortened practice time, players have to work harder on and off the field in order to be successful. And since I came here last November, uh, I've seen the kids working very hard in the weight room, whether they were playing other sports as well. Some kids came out just to do track, just to get... Um, better footwork, better speed for the season. The coaches are committed, the teachers and fans seem to be committed, so I'm excited for it. After all the hard work the players and coaches have put in, one question remains. Are they looking forward to the season? Yeah, I'm definitely excited for the season. Uh, we, we got our first win last week, and uh, we hope to keep it going. I'm excited for the season, no doubt. I'm super excited. There's new teams, better opportunity to see how we are, and I'm really looking forward to the season. Oh, absolutely. You know, you always like, that's why we coach. We look forward, we want to be competitive, we like to compete, and, you know, we want to win, and we want to give it the best shot we got. So, yes, looking forward to the season very much. Though the new training laws make practices more compact, each player and coach is working hard and looking forward to a successful, memorable season. For PVTV News, I'm Brianna Canataro. Thank you, Brianna. It looks like the team is always ready to take on new challenges. Changes like those made to the training laws make the preseason that much more important. Justin Rivera surveyed some fall coaches on the topic. Snake Valley sports teams had an interesting preseason. Coach Grande and her field hockey team looked like the team to beat as they head into the fall. Girls soccer went undefeated, led by Coach Dini. And cross country with first year coach Goodman is looking strong and hopes they can continue what they started last season. Every team's worked hard and hope we could finish the season strong. Preseason is is important for every team. Um, it's where you see what's work, what works, um, what players fit in different positions, where you can use different people, and and how your team will gel together. As Coach Grande enters her 16th season, she is hopeful of seniors Amanda Sirocco, Michaela Agnello, Alyssa Gro, and Sarah Garrido to replace the five lettermen they lost from last season. Overall, the team is ready to get started and look ahead. I would like to be successful. I would like to, you know, go to the county championship again, make it farther in the states like than we did last year. Um, I think we have a solid team, and I think we have a lot of things t uh, to look forward to this season. After going undefeated this preseason, Coach Dini still thinks there's room for his team to improve. We played uh, some three pretty tough competitors during the preseason, but we're going to see some really difficult teams coming up during the regular season. Um, we're a pretty young squad. We have some experienced players, uh, notably Carly Burdan, Nicole Coelez, um, Carly Nash, uh, who, who've had a lot of varsity time. But they, they, we have a lot of younger players who, who are going to have to learn from those, those older, more experienced girls. Senior captains Carly Burdan, Nicole Coelez, and Carly Nash will try to lead the girls' soccer team back to success they saw last year. They're looking to improve past one of the best seasons they've had in the program. Coach Dini is excited to see where the season leads and how his players will perform. I'm really looking at Nicole Quellas to, to lead the defense along with Carly Nash. 
Um, Nicole has a, a really great knowledge of the game. She knows how to distribute the ball uh, to the offense. She knows how to, how to control her defense, so I'm, I'm looking for her to control that. Our goal for this year is to be better than we were last year. Uh, we had a successful team, uh, a successful team, a successful season last year, uh, especially by the, the, the uh, past performances of, of PB Girls Soccer. We, we really were uh, happy with our results last year, and we'd like to continue to build on that. I think we're off to a good start, and uh, I, ho I hope to see that continue. Cross Country has worked to improve and work together to try to bring back the program's name. First year coach Goodman, a cross country runner himself, has had a full time job planning workouts and keeping runners healthy. He is optimistic along with Coach Francisco of what the team can do this season. I think the main goal that I shared with the team was that uh, we wanted to see continual improvement uh, from last year. For the boys, uh, almost essentially the entire team is back. So everyone has, uh, has raced on all the courses, knows, uh, has personal bests. Planning workouts is, uh, you know, part art, part science, right? Some of it is, comes from the fact that I've uh, run cross country myself and have a little bit of background. But before the season started, I did a lot of reading. There's a couple of books that are very good for coaches. With every team at PV excited to get their seasons going, you can expect a lot of wins and players to stand out. With support from everybody in the school, the fall season should be great. From PVTV News, I'm Justin Rivera. Thanks, Justin. Another group adjusting to the change is the freshman class. Carolina Ramirez found out how they are getting along with some help from peer mentors. At the start of every high school year, incoming freshmen have many different emotions from excitement to anxiety. My expectations coming into high school is that there would be more clubs, it would be a bigger school, more teachers, working harder. And the reality of it now is it's everything that I believed it to be. My expectations were of high school was that it's gonna, it was going to be really crowded, and it's not. It's easy to get around. I thought the school would be more complicated getting class to class, but it's really not. I thought it was going to be a lot harder than it is and a lot bigger, but it really isn't. And there's not that many people that I thought there was going to be. The freshmen, when they first get here, are really kind of timid and shy and... Um, you know, they're afraid to talk in class, they're uh, afraid of the upperclassmen, so when they're walking around the school you can kind of tell that they're, um, you know, a little bit shy and afraid and, and nervous, so to speak. The first day especially, there are a lot of lost freshmen. They have trouble finding their way around the building. This year the freshmen were very, very respectful. That's not always the case. Last year there were problems where some of the kids were not respectful and they didn't change over the course of the year. So I have high hopes for this year's freshman class. It can be a hard transition for many freshmen entering a new environment. So PV offers a great program to help the freshmen accommodate. About five years ago, Mrs. Vigilante and I um, worked with Mr. Wallace, our former principal, and we came up with this program after seeing the freshmen have a difficult time transitioning from eighth grade into ninth grade. Um, so this was a way to have the seniors at the time work with the freshmen. Um, now we've expanded it to juniors and seniors. Well, I think when freshmen come in to high school, it's a big change from what they're used to in eighth grade. Um, but having a mentor is another go-to person where they can turn to another peer in addition to their counselors and teachers and everyone here to support them. I think that they benefit because like, it gives them a better idea of how to get through their freshman year from people who have already been through it. I think the freshmen benefit from this program because it gives them someone older to look up to and uh, ask them like, any questions they have. Talk about you know schoolwork and activities, you know. But you know it's just all about high school. That's what I pretty much expect. Seems like it's gonna be really fun, like having someone older to like get suggestions on teachers and like what not to do around a teacher. Yes, I do think the freshmen are able to express themselves because they're talking to other students and they kind of have the same understanding and then they feel a lot more comfortable than talking to teachers. I think they're able to express themselves to like an extent. I think they kind of get scared when it comes to like more serious topics about alcohol or like if we're going to tell them or something, but they get what they want out of the program. There are many different reasons why most teachers have a passion to teach freshmen. I like teaching freshmen because I can mold them. All right, they've just, uh, they've just came into high school, so... They're getting to know themselves, each other, they're in a new environment. Freshmen give me a chance to get them started on the right path towards college. From middle school to high school, the schoolwork differs and it becomes a greater challenge for some students. It's a lot different. I got more homework, a lot more to do in class, a lot more studying. There's a lot more work. You have to work harder. You have to be on time more. You have to hand in everything on time. 
After a hard day at school, most freshmen look forward to going to the sports and clubs PV has to offer. I love the variety of sports and clubs, you know, and Little Falls and in total in West Patterson used to be uh, football, soccer, basketball, and baseball slash softball, you know. It used to be like that. Now there's cross country, there's track. Uh, I heard there's fencing in here, which is pretty much great. I like the variety because you get to choose. You don't get picked for it. You get to choose what you want to do and how you want to do it. It's great because in the rec center, they don't really give this much varieties to play other sports. Once they become used to the environment, they get to be a lot more confident. And, you know, there's a lot more chatting in the class. They're a part of the school now. They're not just the incoming class. As a result, freshman year could have its ups and downs for many students. But with the help of their mentors, guidance counselors, and teachers, they are prepared for a successful year. Thank you, Carolina. In no time at all, the freshmen will be acclimated to Pasig Valley. While the freshmen are just starting their high school experience, seniors are beginning to make decisions about their future. Completing the paperwork necessary for college applications can be stressful, but students look forward to the next chapter in their lives. Alex Rita discussed the feelings brought on by the process. With school year starting, everyone is beginning to get ready for the year that lies ahead. Freshmen trying to learn their way around school, sophomores getting more acquainted, and the juniors getting ready for SATs and HESPA. Senior year will be the most exciting and busiest year in your high school career. Being a senior is great. I'm so excited that it's my last year and all my hard work is going to pay off. It felt weird because I still remember from yesterday all of me going through eighth grade and all that. And I'm just excited to go to college and be a successful teacher in math. I want to make the most of everything I can and have as much fun with all my friends before we graduate. Being here for four years in PV, um, I've really learned to take your time in whatever you're doing, even if it's just doing schoolwork or playing a sport, even at a practice or anything, because Time really is short. It's one of the most valuable commodities we have nowadays because you can never get back time. You can never buy back time. So you really have to live your life to the fullest and do whatever you dream. With being a senior comes many privileges. One, we get to park. That's always good. Because we don't have to take the bus anymore. Senior calf makes it much more easier to just go get food. We don't have to wait online. During testing days, we get to come in late which is pretty awesome because throughout the months you have to come to school at 6 o'clock, 7 o'clock in the morning, you get to come later. Seniority, everyone looks up to you. One thing that seniors stress over is college and the college process. Now is really a busy time for seniors. You know, they're hitting the ground running, starting with their classes, trying to keep up their grades because colleges do look at their grades. And now they're starting the application process for colleges and what they're doing after high school. I am excited for college because I will, I will meet new people, but the process is very long and strenuous. I've taken, I've taken a few AP classes as a senior and, and in a junior, so I think, I think my teachers did a good job in creating a, a college environment for me. So I'm pretty, I'm pretty acquainted with how a lecture should be. To have a new experience in life and to go through it, it's going to be hard, but I know it's going to be worth it. Now, I'm always impressed with the seniors because they've come so far coming in as timid freshmen and then all the things that they do with the programs, the theater, athletics, their courses, the AP classes and honors that they're taking, they never cease to amaze me how they can balance everything and manage their time and still get it all done. Every graduating class is something special, but the class of 2013 will definitely be remembered. Senior class of 2013 is fun, you know, everyone's friendly. Some of the kids I've known since I was in kindergarten, and some of them I just met my freshman year. But I think all in all, after the years go by, the, th the four years that you're here, you learn to find out who your friends are and who you become close with, and then you just all sort of come together at your senior year. Seniors are excited to begin another chapter of their lives. Even though there are a lot of important decisions regarding their future to make this year, the class of 2013 is ready to tackle any obstacle that comes its way. For PVTV News, I'm Alexandria Rita. Thanks, Alex. If seniors need any help with the process, their teachers and guidance counselors are always available to assist. Psaic Valley's roof was outfitted with solar panels last spring. Mike Prodojevic found out all of the benefits. Over the past year, PV has received solar panels on top of its roof. Through tax cuts and rebates, the solar panels are nearly free. And on top of that, they save energy costs for the school. Let's go take a look. 
The solar panels were installed in April of 2012. The panels have saved the school on average by month $5,500 in energy costs. Schools have flat roofs, so energy companies encourage schools to install solar panels. With the energy we make, it goes back to the electric company and is deducted from the energy costs. And if we generate more power than we use, the school gets a rebate for the difference. Well, one of the reasons that the district was very interested into going to, into this program is because it was what's called a PPA program, which means that there is no initial investment or an investment of any kind by the district. Uh, this was an agreement that was entered in with a solar energy company who was solely responsible for providing the equipment that's on the roof. The district paid nothing for any of the items that have been installed. The solar panels are a great idea. I feel like it's an awesome thing for the planet, and so, like, it's a good thing. I didn't know there were solar panels on the roof. I just found that out now. Yeah, it's kind of cool. The solar panels are really good for the environment because they save penguins and polar bears, and the, they save energy for our school, and they help provide money for our school by so we can buy materials for our classes and our gyms. Well, I'm sure the solar panels have an effect on like the environment and stuff. Uh, my opinion on the solar panels is that they're a nice leap towards the future for our school and conserving the environment and fossil fuels. All right, fo uh, solar panels work on a, a process called, they're called photovoltaic cells, photo meaning light, right, and they'll ch change that into electricity that we, can, that we can use. That's about as general as I can get. The solar panel project so far has been a great success for us. It was something that we initially did not have to lay out any taxpayer money for and we're able to save taxpayers dollars on the energy savings. So it's been a, a huge success for us. It's going to, in my opinion, take about a year to, to, to get a, a good handle on what the savings is uh, to the district for coming from the solar panels. Uh, it was hard in the summertime because the summertime the energy usage is always high because most of the air conditioners are, are on in the building. So it's going to give us a year to get a real uh, good feel for what the uh, savings is going to be. We're hoping, of course, that it's in the area of seventy to seventy-five thousand uh, dollars. The whole solar movement has really uh, gained ground and, and got our attention, and we were exploring any different way we could to save money. And uh, it, we went out for a, uh, a inquiry for power purchase agreements, and we found uh, several that we liked, and we selected uh, Gridpoint Energy, and we entered into a power purchase agreement with them. And that uh, has really been uh, a, a plus for the district, as again, we did not have to lay out any initial funds, and yet we're going to save money uh, for the next 15 years. As it turns out, we, were, we got into the program uh, in the right time because the, uh, see, the company that uh, Just Energy, which is the name of the company, how, th how they make money on this is through uh, government rebates and uh, tax advantages that they get. Uh, through something called SREX. And it's my understanding that the value of the SREX now, because of the many, many, not only school districts, but government entities as well as businesses, are getting involved in, in the solar energy programs, that the value of the SREX has gone way down. So it's not as advantageous as it once was. But of course, our agreement was done at a time when the value of the SREX was very high. So. I, I think we've hit a home run with our solar energy program. If they're looking to save money, it's actually a very good idea. And the power purchase agreement, since the schools don't get tax breaks, is actually a good way of going. So you don't have to lay out any initial monies. It's a, a wonderful way of going. And we also have the TV screen downstairs that display uh, the science classes have used that information and have kind of made it into a lesson in each of the different levels. Uh, and it's a, it's, a, it's a plus for the school. It looks like a bright future for PVN and solar panels. This will certainly pave the way for a more energy efficient future. I'm Mike Predojevic reporting from PVTV. Thank you, Mike. You can find out more information about PV Solar Project, including project savings, on the homepage of Passaic Valley's website. Passaic Valley's website is an excellent resource for everything a student or parent may need to know about what's happening at the high school. It sure is. And that wraps up the edition of PVTV News. I'm Cameron Cullen. 
And I'm Megan Coughlin. From all of us at PVTV, thank you for watching. Good night.